In my last video, we analyzed this clip of Sean Johnson in terms of energy. This time, we will be analyzing it in terms of forces. First, we'll deal with the jump. In this jump, at the moment of her maximum height in the y direction, there is only one force acting upon her, gravity, as there is nothing she is standing on to push back up on her. The force of gravity is acting from her center of mass. Center of mass is the point at which the distribution of the object's weight is symmetrical. However, if your object can change shape, like humans, the center of mass is calculated for every part and then as a whole. For men and women, different parts weigh different amounts. Men have more mass on their upper bodies, making their center of mass about where their belly button is. However, women have their center of mass below their belly button due to having wider hips. Center of gravity changes as the shape does. It can even be out of the body. For example, if a person is hunching over, it will be in that empty space. While Sean is doing her split jumps, her leg transfer a large part of her weight upwards as well as her arms are lifted. Therefore, her center of gravity changes because her weight is now distributed differently. This can be found by finding the center of gravity for each particular body part and then combining it with each other's parts torque and then using total torque to determine the, enti the entire body's center of mass location. Next, let's talk about the back handspring. In this, she's pushing off the balance beam, which in return is pushing up against her, giving her enough force to start her handspring. As she rotates in the air, she brings her legs back, letting her legs catch speed and momentum. Then, as to not run out of force in the end, she brings one leg forward and curls her body into a tighter position, which makes the distribution of mass relative to the axis of rotation a lot smaller, which increases her momentum even more, giving her enough energy to land the flip. In her second back handspring, she keeps both legs together the entire time instead of bringing them both together at the end. This keeps the distribution of mass closer to the axis of rotation, giving her more momentum and allowing her to land the handspring 0.2 seconds earlier than the first flip. This can be explained by rotational inertia, which is the measure of how difficult it is to get an object to start spinning. This is directly proportional to mass and distribution of mass relative to the axis of rotation, which is shown in the equation torque equals moment of inertia times angular acceleration. Torque is the speed that the object produces to rotate. This equation means the heavier something is, the more force it takes to get it to start spinning. Also, the further away the mass is spread out from the axis of rotation, the smaller the acceleration and the more energy it takes for it to start spinning. When she lands, she lands with her knees bent so that the force that is pushing back on her from her landing dissipates rather than breaks causing her injury in her joints from the impact. Forces can be used to explain why having a high muscle density to low mass ratio, as well as being smaller, really benefits a gymnast. If there were a small block of wood and a tall block of wood, the small block of wood would have more balance because the center of gravity is closer to the floor than that of the taller one. In the same way, taller people have a higher center of gravity than short people. This gives the shorter person an advantage as the lower center of gravity gives better balance. Also, when taking a look at rotational inertia, we know that the more spread out the mass is, the harder it is to get it to spin. This applies to people. The longer the person is, the more spread out the mass is, needing more force to get it spinning. Also, it's easier for a small person to condense their body so that they can gain more momentum.